welcome to another edition of Yorkshire Chris Weekly. Coming up in today's episode, we'll be having a look at clumping and non-clumping bamboos. We'll be trimming a palm tree and we'll also be tidying up and making safe some spiky yuccas. Here I have this well-established Kimrops humulus European fan palm it's growing in this very gritty bed here which is pretty much all grit down to the first 20 centimeters and then it's subsoil and soil underneath it's really healthy lots of beautiful green leaves and it's flowering for the second year in a row here so it's nice and healthy no spotting on the leaves at all but what I want to do today is take off these lower leaves so we can reveal some of the trunk and I'm also going to take off all these shoots from the base which I do every year so it has one defined trunk rather than growing into like a shrubby bush basically so I've got my trusty secateurs I'm going to go in and cut these leaves close to the base of the trunk as possible they are quite prickly the stems of the of the leaves so to be quite careful and I'll just carry on doing that until they're all clear now I've finished pruning all the leaves and old flowers off this palm and I hope you agree it looks a lot tidier and a lot more defined with just the one trunk still plenty of leaves coming out there taking off about 20 to 30 leaves from the, the lower part of the trunk I'm very happy with the finished result Now this is my yucca faxonia. It's a huge, potentially huge growing yucca. And like most yuccas, it does have spines or spikes at the end of the leaves. And what I do every year to make it safe for people to walk past, and especially for children and pets, is for the end of the leaves to be snipped off. If I just take a closer look, you can see how these older leaves have already had the ends snipped off all the way around here but the newer leaves emerging this year haven't had that yet so what I'm going to do today is to snip off all the ends of all the leaves and if you do a nice clean cut it doesn't really cause much, much die back if we go to one of the older leaves you can see where I've cut it back there's a little bit of die back there but there isn't on others so I'll just go around and basically just cut the ends off. And this makes it far safer to have this plant in the garden, especially because it's near a path. And it shouldn't stop you growing yuccas and agaves in your garden. If you're worried about the spikes, just snip them off and it poses far less a hazard. So I'm going to go around the garden and do the same with the agaves and the yuccas in other spots around the garden to make it safer. And I'll do this a couple of times throughout the year as the plants grow. Right, what I want to talk to you now about is bamboos and the myths around them. 
basically people are scared of planting them because they think they're all going to run and take over the garden. So I'm just going to take you through a few common examples and talk about the differences between which bamboos run and which bamboos stay as a clump and some of the, the grey area in between. So this is a Phyllostachys bamboo. This is potentially a runner. And this is a Phagesia bamboo, which is a clumper. And basically there's two main types, as I've mentioned. You've got the clumping ones, which are called Pachyomorph, and you've got the running ones, which are called Leptomorph. So Pachyomorph, basically in a pack, stays together. Leptomorph um, is the long, thin ones that can run. So with the Phargesias, for example, there's tons of different types of Phargesias. This one has nice bluish combs. And as you can see at the base, they're all very close together. All the culms, all the canes, very, very close together. You don't get any that's spread out far. And this is a consistent characteristic of the Pachymorph bamboos. And basically it's because underground, the rhizomes of these type of bamboos are very short. They're like a proper rhizome like you'd find in bananas and irises and things like that where you get shoots going off a very short, thick part of rhizome or underground stem. Whereas in the leptomorph types, so we're talking about the phyllostachys and the sasses, the underground rhizomes are basically just like the culms, but they're going horizontally. So they're spread out potentially a long way and then shoot up the culms from there. Phyllostachys is a little bit different because it behaves like a clump forming one in conditions that we have in a lot of gardens and then in some dry years or some really warm wet years you can often get a random shoot come out it can go several meters across the lawn and then start a new plant basically in the middle of the lawn or somewhere else in the garden so they can behave like clump farming but really they are a spreading running type so phagesias are fantastic for the garden because they do spread, all bamboos do spread, but they do it at a consistent sort of rate, sort of slowly going out each spring, shooting out new culms, and it's in a, in a way that can be predicted, whereas Phyllostachys is a little bit unpredictable because they might have the straight culms going in a nice clump for years and years, and all of a sudden they shoot out a long way away. So far, the ones I've had have been quite quite predictable. The Phyllostachys ones have stayed very close together and that's because I've not had them many years. They've not been through many winters and summers so they've sort of kept quite happy in the, in the growing area that they were planted in. But they do spread in time and that's what a lot of people can be worried about because they plant them and then several years later they can take over the garden, they can puncture through pond liners, they can come up through paving potentially. So you have to watch out for which type you plant and where. So this is one of my Phyllostachys bamboos. This is Phyllostachys parvifolia, which means it's got small leaves. And this is potentially a timber bamboo, so it can grow in time with huge culms. But as you can see, it looks like a decent clump. That's been there four years now, and it's only spread, what, 20 centimeters? Because it was quite a big plant when I planted it. It's keeping very close together and if we just take a closer look at it you can see some of the, the culms are coming out you can see down here there's one shooting towards the screen there and then over here you can see one going sideways and then going up like this with one of the new culms that are forming so it's behaving like a clumper and it will do for a while but when this matures, so give it 5-10 years and become really established, it will probably run across the bed. So you've got to plant it either with a barrier around it in the, in the ground down to about 60 to 90 centimetres or so and then about 10-15 centimetres above the ground. You can trench around it every year and get like a, 
a mattock and cut through the, the top sort of 30 centimetres of roots every every year. Or, as I have done, I've put it in this raised bed. So although it doesn't look raised, it, it is because you've got timber going all the way around. And I don't mind if it spreads in this whole bed really. The bananas can be moved and a large area for it to go into. And even if it slips under the path and on this side, well that's fine because this will eventually be all bamboos on this side. So I'm enjoying it as it stays a clump, but I'm happy for it to spread in time as well. You just got to be aware of that. So obviously if you plant plants very close by, so if you planted it just there, like a little palm tree, then very soon it will get swamped by the bamboo. So that's one Phyllostachys. And here's another Phyllostachys bamboo. Again, look how tightly that's clumping. A lot of people might call that a clump forming bamboo, which it's behaving like one at the moment. But you've got to remember this is a leptomorph type, so the underground rhizome that I was talking about earlier has the ability to go horizontally a long way and then send up shoots. So basically one of these comes are going up and it goes up three or four meters at the moment. You can easily decide to go in spring sideways through the soil or just above or below the soil and go four meters in a different direction before shooting up. So it has a potential to, to behave in two different ways. But as you can see at the moment, it's been in a couple of years and it's probably covering a width of only about 30 40 centimeters whereas the horizontal the vertical growth like I said is about four meters and here's another example of a Vargesia bamboo that was planted as a tiny three or five litre pot four years ago and it's slowly spread to cover an area at the base of about 60 70 centimeters but it is wide as it goes up, so it goes out a good metre, metre and a half across here and it's about two metres tall. So that is very predictable growth of this type of bamboo, basically like a bush. It won't send out runners across the garden. Now here's my favourite bamboo of all, which is a Berinda 1046 with the amazing blue culms. And these on the right hand side especially are over a year old now and they're still maintaining their fantastic blue colour. But this is another true clump forming pachymorph bamboo. It won't send out runners, it's got predictable growth so it can be grown without barrier in the garden. It will spread so it will come out eventually over the years but it mainly stays in quite a tight clump but it does get big, so looking up at it, that's a good four or five meters tall. So it can cast a bit of shadow, but it's a predictable growth as mentioned, so it's a great one to have in the garden with no need for a barrier, unless of course you decide to plant it. It's a very small plant in the center, for instance, where my finger is, and then decide to plant a little palm tree or a shrub there, then obviously it will swamp it in a couple of years. And this is another clump forming bamboo. It's another Phargesia. This is one of the most vigorous Phargesias, Phargesia robusta, which I planted four years ago now. I planted several, I think about seven or eight plants along a good 10, 15 meters of garden here. But it is more vigorous. And if you look closer to this one, you can see the new culms coming up, that stripy appearance with the new fresh leaf sheaths around the new combs but you can see here we have a fatsia, fatsia spider's web and you can see that it's growing into that because it's grown big it's a very big growing phagesia but it has slowly spread if I can get in there you can see how it's spread from the initial plant sort of in there and it's come out and it's come out it's about a meter now a good meter width and obviously it's gone in all directions a meter so this is a bigger type of clump forming bamboo so you've got to be careful where you plant this so it doesn't swamp lots of other plants like it's starting to do with this fatsia which I will have to move 
Now I'm going to show you another clump forming bamboo on a much bigger scale. Now this is the daddy of them all. This is the Chuskea gigantea. And it is a clump forming bamboo. It behaves just like the Fagesias and the Berindas, whereby it's a pachymorph type of bamboo. Short rhizomes, short thick rhizomes underground, don't go very far and the new culms come up in a predictable manner from the original plant going out in all directions. But it's big, it covers a big area and this is still growing. So this has been planted three or four years now as it was about a 10 litre plant and now it's about two metres across and it's as I've shown in previous videos, going about five meters up. And as you can see, if you plant this in a small garden, it will completely overtake the garden because it grows huge and it's going to continue growing probably about five meters across if I don't contain it somehow. So this is not suitable for a small garden, but it is still a clump forming bamboo. And you can see just to the right under here you might not be able to see, there is a poor little Trachycarpus palm that's planted at the same time as the Chiskea bamboo and actually the original Chiskea was about, about over there small plant covering about that width and over the last few years it's steadily gone out and it's now got up to this Trachycarpus palm that will move because it's in a, a silly space, I haven't planted it there really so that's the biggest clump forming bamboo that you're likely to see in a garden. And bamboos can take several years to show their true colours because like a lot of plants they take a, several years to mature. They have a juvenile stage where they do lots of wispy growth like you can see here. These are the old culms of this Phyllostachus iridescence bamboo. And then when they're happy, when they're starting to mature, they'll become more upright in, the, in Phyllostachys and produce much, much thicker culms. You can see there, look at the size of that one. That is much, much thicker than the older ones that were just been produced in the last couple of years. So when they're happy and mature, they need age, they need water and they need food. Those three things you need to get really thick culms on your, your bamboos, plus the species as well the species that will produce them and then in future years most of the culms should be this thick which is much thicker than the previous years now there's one type of bamboo that we've not discussed and that's the type that you want to avoid in your garden really unless you have a huge estate or a large area that you really want to cover with bamboo that is a true running bamboos we mentioned phyllostachys that will run in time and they have the potential to run but they don't run in all directions all the time. So true runners are things like Sasa, Pseudosassa, they're the ones that will just absolutely cover an area. And they're the type of bamboos I do not grow in my garden because I don't want the complete unpredictability of a bamboo covering a huge area. Plus most of those types of running bamboos that don't grow thick canes and I want thick canes, I like the, the verticalness in the garden, the really thick canes look more tropical to me and exotic. So they're the ones I avoid. There is the walking stick bamboo, which is a beautiful, really interesting bamboo that will cover a large area, and that is a real runner. That will cover a huge area, go out meters in all directions. If you can contain that with a barrier, that's probably worth growing because of the really interesting culms. But apart from that, real running bamboos, I would really avoid them in a small, medium or a large sized garden unless you can really truly contain them. Better to stick to the clump farming, the Perindas, the Phagesias, and the Phyllostachys, which mostly stays a clump, but it is, it is a running bamboo, so don't fall into the false sense of security to think it will stay in a clump. Give it a few years, it can easily take over a large area if it's not contained with a barrier or some sort of edge into it. So I hope you found that interesting and sort of explain the difference between the clump farming and the running types of bamboos and then the grey area of the Phyllostachys which is the most popular bamboos grown in UK gardens which like we said clump farming mainly but they are truly a running type of bamboo just because of the morphology the physiology of the bamboo rhizomes 
they can spread. I picked up a great little bedding plant and this is a kuffia. This is kuffia torpedo with bright red, pillarbox red flowers with a purpley black centre. And I'll be planting this out for the summer. Never seen it before, but really interested in flowers. Now these are the most neglected palm trees I have. And they look really tiny, but all these I grew from seed that I actually sowed in this washing up bowl. It was either 2011 or 2012, and I think they came up in 2012 or 2013 in the spring. So you think they'll be much bigger now because they're about five, six years old. But well, they've not been fed really, and hardly been watered. They've been left to freeze through for five years plus now. But they're really looking pretty healthy. It just shows how hardy Trachycarpus fortunii palm is. Or there could be fortunii cross with the waggy palm. So what we're going to do today is we're going to separate these, liberate them from the washing up bowl they've been in for five, six years, put them into their own individual pots and just use a mixture of multi-purpose compost and a bit of garden soil. So finally after five six years that's what we're going to do now. And now they're all potted up. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen little palm trees looking amazingly healthy and they have been completely neglected for five years. I put a bit of slow release fertilizer into these, give them a good water and then basically apart from watering them I'll forget about them, leave them outside and then next year I'll plant them up again, probably give them away. Thanks for watching this edition of Yorkshire Chris Weekly. Next week we'll be getting to grips with a water irrigation system. Join me then.